So as the child grows, mashallah, do you know what? Life is extremely difficult, extremely difficult, extremely difficult. When you were born, you came to this world. This world is full of obstacles and tests. It is a testing ground. It's like a school. Every week you have an examination at the school. Every week you have a test. Every day some people have tests. If you go to a top private school, they will test you every day what you did yesterday. So this is the best. The dunya, Allah is going to test you one after the other. Every day you will be tested what you did, the, what you learned the previous day or earlier in that day or what you know. Allah will test you. Allah says, وَلَنَبْنُوَنَّكُمْ Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm sure you've heard this verse. I just said one word. You know, Arabic language, a lot of you might understand a little bit. But when Allah says, نَبْلُوكُمْ It means we will test you. And when He says, لَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ He is emphasizing it so strongly. We will definitely, definitely, definitely test every single one of you. It's going to be test after test after test. That's why you are on earth. Everyone seated here, including myself, we have issues we need to deal with. You have issues. Health issues, we've all struggled with. Whether it's a cough, no matter what it is, we've all struggled with. Health issues. Nobody here can say, I've never had a health issue since I was born up to today. Go and ask your mother. Maybe when you were little, you were a colic child. Maybe you used to scream. Subhanallah. This is the plan of Allah. Why? Because Allah wants to test you. What are you going to do? Some of us, when we are tested, we get angry. Some of us, when we are tested, we get depressed. Allah says, no. There's no point in getting depressed. No point in getting angry. We could not all go to top schools. Agreed? We could not all get certain qualifications that we might have wanted. We had to fit in somewhere sometimes, either because we didn't do that well. Not everyone's brain is exactly the same in capacity. Allah created you. You are good at something. What is it? It might be different from what I am good at. But Allah did not leave you just like that. There is something that He gave you. Sometimes you don't realize what He's given you. He has bestowed upon you some gift that others perhaps don't have to your level. Some people are very intelligent, some people are good with their hands, some people good at mathematics, some people love biology, geography, some people are very good at administration, some people are good as teachers, some people are good as, for example, computer specialists, some people are good at sitting and watching, so they are guards, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, I see you are smiling. I didn't say lazy, I said good at sitting and watching, mashallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You still can have a job, you still can have a job. And you still can go. And how much will you earn? Let me inform you. At the beginning I said, man is such he can adapt. That's Allah's gift to you. You can adapt. The man who earns 50,000 Qatar Riyals a month. And another who earns 500 Qatar Riyals a month. Trust me, they are eating. Trust me, they are surviving. They get used to it. When that man who's earning 50,000, one day suddenly loses his job. And he's not earning. He will struggle. If he's a mu'min, he will make the most of what he has. He probably has saved a little bit in a beautiful way because he knows that I'm a mu'min, I'm a Muslim and perhaps this is a gift of Allah. I need to make the most of it. And if he is not a mu'min or his iman is weak, he will start to cry. He will become depressed. He will become upset. He will not be able to survive. Not realizing that the one on the street who is wearing a uniform and who's sweeping, he's happy. Assalamu alaikum. He's looking at you. Time for salah, he puts his broom on one side and Allahu Akbar and he's so happy, he's delighted, mashallah. You give him one riyal, oh, jazakallah, thank you so much, sir, thank you, sir. He'll carry your bags, your plastic bags from the supermarket all the way to your hotel room in the middle of the heat and he won't expect more than one to ten riyals from you, subhanallah. And he's happy and delighted, but you are a human being just like him. How come he's doing that? That's a gift of Allah. And he's happier than you are, yet you've got a thousand riyal in your pocket. That's Allah. Adapt. This is the test. This is something that really we need to think about. Don't become depressed at your test because your test is considered a gift for other people in their real life. Does it make sense? I have seen people without legs, wallahi. And they are so happy. I met a man who cannot move for many, many years. May Allah grant him shifa. 
He is paralyzed from top to bottom. He communicates with his eyes. May Allah grant him cure. But if you see him, you talk to him, you will be motivated because trust me, his contentment and happiness with Allah is far greater by the will of Allah than a lot of us who are seated here today. We have small issues, so don't become depressed. The issues are there, that's what the dunya is all about. I'm here to tell you today that hardships in your life would start from the point of birth even before anything is written against you, your hardships have started. You know, Allah says your deeds are going to be written at the age of maturity. When you mature, then the pen is lifted and things are written for you or against you at that age. But your hardships, they start before that. Innocent children, sometimes you ask yourself, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested this child, the kidney failure? May Allah grant shifa to those who have kidney failure. Why is it that Allah has tested this child? Innocent child cannot see. Innocent child cannot hear. That all is a test. Allah knows why. It's a test for you who are around the child. As for the child, Allah knows that it is Allah's child before it came to you on earth. And it will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps Allah will grant that child a lofty rank in Jannah. It is something amazing. And we definitely need to think about this unique system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, as the child grows older and the child starts asking a question and I got to the point of marriage and the child is saying, I want to marry, please consider what the child is saying. Those who say, I am embarrassed about what people will say, they need to understand. There is a greater embarrassment concerning what Allah will have to say or do. Remember this. People start saying back at home, what are they going to say? The people, Wallahi, are you really bothered to fulfill the amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you? If that is the case, watch out. Fulfill it in a beautiful way. If you have proper reasons, give them. MashaAllah, talk to your child. Don't use the fact, oh, you know, in our family it doesn't work like this. Do you not belong to Islam as a family? Are we not family members here? Are you not part of my family? I'm part of your family. We have the deen. We have Islam. Subhanallah. So, don't say, you know, in my family, my tribe, they don't allow it. You know, our culture, if your culture agrees with Islam, it's a beautiful culture. If there are two, three elements that are against Islam, you have to drop them because Islam comes first. I am saying that, yes, there is an ideal. Every parent has some dream. But can I tell you that reality whether you like it or not, you have to adjust your dream as the years pass. If you don't, you will be angry, you will be depressed. Many of us, when we were young, we had a dream. One day I will do this, one day I will do that, one day I will do this. And you had to change your dream. I'm sure you heard the story about the man who was, I said it in this masjid some time back, and I, I want to say it again. The man who was a porter, and he had a dream that one day I will carry the goods of someone who's wealthy, and I'll get some money and I'll do something. So what happened is, he was at the train station and there was a man who came out of the train, the train with some milk. Milk in a can, a big can. And he was a wealthy man. That time there was a shortage of milk. So to have milk is something big. So he said, can you carry this? This man says, yes, I will carry this for you. And he says, I will give you a nice amount of money, good amount of money for this. So that man puts, the, he took the can and he put it on top of his head. And he was walking, very happy. Today his dream is coming true. Why? Because I'm going to get a lot of money. And you know, they have a skill. The porters, if you have seen them, they put something on their head. They have a skill to put something on top without holding it. And they can even run, it won't fall. They can even run, it won't fall. Because they know, they are experts in their field. Subhanallah. This young man, he has this thing and he's walking, walking. And that man says, look, whatever you do, don't drop the milk. He said, no, I won't. Don't worry, I won't. So he's walking and as he's walking, he's thinking to, my, to himself, I'm going to get, say for example, $100 from this man or $10, whatever it was. I will buy two chickens. From there, the chickens will lay eggs. When they lay eggs, I will start selling eggs. Then I will buy more chickens. Before I know it, I'm going to have a foul run. And I will have many chickens, they will lay eggs and I will also start selling the chickens themselves. So I will be, now be a person who sells chickens and eggs. And after some time, I will buy some sheep. And then I will, have, I will have a little farm and I will be able to grow. On one hand, I have my 
chickens, my eggs. The other hand, I will have sheep and perhaps goats. I might want to sell some of the milk of the goats and I might end up selling the sheep and I will open a butcher. I will be a butcher. And after some time, I'll buy a big piece of land and I'm going to buy some cows. When I buy the cows, we'll sell milk, we will sell cows, we will sell so many things. Wow, I will employ 200, 300 people and I will make sure that everything runs. And he is busy walking with this milk on his head and his plan. His plan. Beautiful plan. It's workable, isn't it? It can work if he works hard and Allah gives him acceptance. They are from amongst us, even maybe sitting here. People who started off with nothing and mashallah, today they have so much. You know that. So it's possible. So he has this dream and then he says, then I will buy a building in the city center. I will buy because now I, when I make money, I can't just leave all my eggs in one basket. I will buy a building in the city center. And after that, I will buy another building and I will give it on rent and I will become one of the biggest, one of the biggest businessmen in this whole land. Then I will go to the king to ask him for his daughter. Did you hear that? I will go to the king because now they will know me. I will be a businessman and I will be the biggest. They will ask me for... They will ask, I will, when he asks, I will then go to them and say, look, I want to marry your daughter. And as he is thinking this, he hit a rock and, he, and, and this, this thing here fell down. So when it fell down, the owner of the milk, he was so upset, he turned around and said, look, what did you do to my milk? I lost my milk. He says, are, are, wait, hang on, relax. You only lost your milk? I lost my chickens, I lost my goats, I lost my eggs, I lost everything. I lost my, I, so many people lost their jobs. And at the same time, I even lost a wife. <laughs> the point I'm raising is you have to adjust your dreams. Because you have a dream. It's not wrong to dream. Dream, please dream. But remember, it's Allah's plan. You will have to adjust. We have idea, oh, I have, I have daughters. Inshallah, I will get them uh, grow, uh, you know, they, they will grow up, mashallah, under me. I will teach them. They will become hafidah of the Quran. They will this. Everyone has a dream. I want my child to become imam of the masjid, to learn Islam, to spread the deen. Everyone has a good dream. I want my child to do this, to do that. You know what? And then you say, I want my child to marry someone, inshallah, who's a really good person. And inshallah, they will have children. I will have grandchildren one day by the will of Allah and whatever, whatever. It's exactly like this man who had his dreams with his you know, can of milk at the top. If anything happens to that can, trust me, you have to adjust your dreams. But Allah will give you something not very far off. If you aim very high with your children, inshallah, at least you will get halfway there. But if you have no aim, where are you going to go? You have no aim. So I have met young people, I want to memorize the Quran. I want to memorize the Quran. Give me some advice. Memorizing the Quran is not easy. Yes. It's good that you have the, the intention. Start today. You might not finish everything and you might find it difficult. How many children started Hifl and then after a little while they gave up, they found it very difficult. At least they have a link with the Quran. At least now you can read the Quran looking inside properly. Some parents, they say, I want my child to be happy. They push the child, they force the child, they have a problem with the child, they start fighting with the child. And the child goes in and the child starts learning Quran and they me memorize one juice and then they give up after a big fight. You don't realize that while I was trying to make my child a full hafid, at least now they can read the Quran very beautifully looking inside. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. Have you thought of it? But if you didn't even plan that, they wouldn't even have achieved this much. So life is filled with hardship, one after the other, tests. You have to adjust your dreams. You have to, one day you will have a lot of wealth. The next day you will struggle because you will suffer a loss. You have to suffer a loss. It's Allah's promise. Because that verse that I was reading in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah says, You know what he speaks about in there? I will definitely test you. Some days you will be inflicted with fear, khawf. Fear of what? All types of fear. You are scared. Look at the people in some of the lands around us. May Allah protect our lands. May Allah grant them ease and goodness. Innocent people, they were living. They had nothing. Nothing was happening. They weren't interfering with anybody. They had to run away. Their homes were destroyed. Everything happened. They found to be refugees all across the globe. What happened to them? Take a lesson. We are concerned. We want to see solution. We are Muslimin. We want a stop 
to all the fighting and killing. That's how it's supposed to be. That's what we make dua for. Sometimes there is confusion. We don't even understand what's going on. That's how much confusion there is. But the lesson to learn is those people, a lot of them had more comfortable lives than you have today. Do you realize that? What happened? Allah says we tested them. We tested them. They adapted. They went. They came. Those people who were living, who in air condition those people who had beautiful beddings they were found later on to be in camps of refugees where they don't even have a blanket but they got used to it allah gifted them by allowing their bodies to adjust by allowing their system to adjust you have to adjust if you don't you get depressed you become sick you suffer a sickness a mental disease because you did not adjust you have to adjust when you lost your job or your salary went down or they were retrenching people and you had to go for example don't be depressed make the most of what you have some of the people who are the healthiest and wealthiest are from among those who one day they suffered a dip and then they came up they suffered a dip and then they came up